Yo, man, K, you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm cooler than a fan, my They took my children from me. Yeah, I mean, How I was, terrible is that? I'll, I'll some guns in. Yeah, they always find guns. guns I never leave without a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm on the middle of an interview, sir. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about it. You know, and let them find guns and drugs now. Is drugs? That, that, that's what it was reported. Sir, you can... Back in 2011, Cat Williams found himself in a bit of a custody kerfuffle involving his adopted daughter, Leanne. The whole ordeal started when the girl's nanny, Crystal McGee, falsely claimed to be her biological mother. How do you keep this kid safe without guns? They were in a lockbox that the police broke. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, saying, if the police come in and raid my place and break into my gun boxes, you're going to find guns. But the According to BET, Williams' former nanny took advantage of his absence during a court date, asserting that she was Leanne's mom and subsequently gaining custody of the girl. It wasn't until Williams filed paperwork to disprove McGee's claims that Leanne was returned to him. Well, I'm not in a gang. What difference does it make? Now, now, you, you were actually stopped for this and let go because you have a license for no, it, No, right? this is their ninth time coming to my house. The problem was this time they came to my office and took my... TMZ, always on top of celebrity news, broke the story with exclusive access to court documents, reporting that it took nearly a month for Williams to resolve the legal issues and regain custody. So now when I can't have my kids at my office, that's an issue. I must be yeah, yeah, the definitely. most terrible black dude. <laughs> the outlet also highlighted that McGee hadn't worked for Williams for years leading up to the custody battle, suggesting her motive might have been to access government benefits in California. Coming after my kids now? Because it was already a witch hunt. Now you want my babies? Yikes. That's that's wild, man. That's wild, cat. Yeah. Now, now, I mean, shit. I, I'm sure you want this year to go. But let's switch gears from the courtroom drama and delve into Cat Williams's life as a father. Despite his viral school dance scene on TikTok, the comedian is acutely aware of the challenges of fatherhood. Williams, known for his unfiltered humor, doesn't shy away from sharing his experiences as a dad. He has one biological child, Micah, with ex-wife Quadria Locus. Interestingly, Williams went above and beyond, adopting his son's half-siblings, expanding his family to a total of 10 kids, contrary to the previous belief that he had eight. Williams' decision to adopt a large family stems from a deep-seated commitment to protect children from the hardships he faced in his own difficult childhood. According to the Grio, Williams faced homelessness as a teenager, a period that left a lasting impact on him. Before hitting the big time, he made a promise to himself that if he ever became successful, he would use his means to help others. In an interview with Howard Stern and on the Club Shay Shay podcast, Williams revealed that he adopted his son Micah's half-siblings to shield them from the foster care system. Despite his noble intentions, Williams acknowledged that he wasn't perfect and didn't always lead by example. He admitted on the podcast, I didn't do good by leading by example, but behind the scenes, that's never what I was pushing. Williams emphasized the importance of accountability and responsibility in parenting, recognizing that even when you're doing a great thing, challenges may arise. Later in the podcast, he shared his perspective on parenthood, highlighting the goal of doing better for your kids than your parents did for you. Cat, though, has had his fair share of run-ins with the law. Back on November 13, 2006, things took a legal turn for Cat Williams at Los Angeles International Airport. An unexpected discovery unfolded as a reported stolen gun was found in his briefcase, leading to his arrest. Fast forward to December 14, 2006, Williams opted for a no-contest plea to a misdemeanor charge of carrying a concealed firearm. The consequence? Three years of probation, restitution payments, and acknowledgement for the three days he spent behind bars. Moving on to November 2010, Williams found himself in another legal entanglement while working on a film in Coweta County, Georgia. This time, he faced accusations of stealing $3,500 worth of coins and jewelry. Released the next day on a $40,000 bond, he was later charged with burglary and criminal trespass by the police. Then, on June 11, 2011, Williams got into hot water once again, this time in connection with an alleged assault on a tractor driver. According to the supposed victim, three women attacked him with rocks and dirt clods around 4.30 p.m. local time. 
In response, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department stepped in, arresting the three women for assault with a deadly weapon and Williams for felony intimidation of a witness. A night spent in jail, and he was released on $50,000 bail. The legal saga continued on November 15, 2012, when Williams faced arrest in Oakland, California. The charge? Suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon. Allegedly, he had used a bottle to beat an 18-year-old man aboard his tour bus in Berkeley, California. After a shortened performance at the Oracle Arena in Oakland on November 16, 2012, an attendee wasn't amused. In fact, they filed a class action lawsuit seeking compensation for themselves and others who felt they paid for a show and got nothing but Cat Williams' non-performance. Ouch! Then fast forward to December 2, 2012 in Seattle. Williams found himself in hot water after an alleged dispute at a bar in the South Lake Union neighborhood. What's more, he was a no-show for the first night of a planned two-night performance at the Paramount Theater. Talk about adding fuel to the fire. Five days later, on December 7, 2012, another arrest went down in Dunnegan, California. This time, it was related to a bench warrant from an incident the previous month in Sacramento. Williams allegedly took a three-wheeled motorbike on a sidewalk and refused to stop for police. The chase was cut short due to safety concerns, and a bench warrant was issued after Williams narrowly missed some bystanders. Yikes. December 28, 2012, back in Los Angeles. Williams found himself in cuffs once again, this time on child endangerment charges. He was held on a $100,000 bail, and four of his adopted children were placed in protective custody. The case eventually fell apart, and no trial was scheduled, but it surely added more drama to the mix. Not one to shy away from the law, on January 8, 2013, Williams was arrested at his Los Angeles home for failing to appear in Sacramento to address the November 25th motorbike charges. It seemed like the legal troubles just kept piling up. Skipping ahead to October 29, 2014, Williams teamed up with Sugi Knight for an arrest in Beverly Hills for allegedly stealing a camera from a photographer on September 5th. The saga ended in April 2017, when Williams pled no contest to the charge of robbery landing him a year of anger management classes and three years of probation. And just when you thought it might calm down, on February 29, 2016, Williams faced another arrest in Gainesville, Georgia. A clerk at a swimming pool store claimed Williams had hit him. When the police arrived, they found Williams ready for the handcuffs, lying face down with his hands behind his back. Then on March 23, 2016, a video made its way across the internet, showcasing a surprising altercation involving the 44-year-old Williams and a 17-year-old boy. The dispute unfolded during a soccer game in Gainesville, leading to authorities considering a review of the incident alongside his ongoing court cases. Skipping ahead to April 27, 2016, Williams found himself in trouble once again. This time, he was arrested and charged with battery in Atlanta, Georgia. The alleged offense? reportedly tossing a salt shaker at the manager of a local restaurant after his group was denied preferential seating. Talk about a salty situation. Fast forward to July 24, 2016, where Williams got into another scrape. This time he was arrested on suspicion of battery after an altercation with a woman at the Sportsman's Lodge, a hotel in Sherman Oaks, California. It seemed like the incidents just kept piling up. September 15, 2016, brought another arrest for Williams in Fulton County, Georgia. This time, the charge was second-degree criminal damage to property, and it was related to a warrant for failing to appear in court for the April 27 incident. The new allegation stated that Williams had thrown a man's cell phone back on February 28, 2016. Moving on to October 6, 2018, Williams faced yet another arrest, this time in Portland, Oregon. The charge, assault in the fourth degree, stemming from an argument about his dog that escalated into a physical altercation with a driver. As if that wasn't enough, he was also arrested on an outstanding warrant from Georgia. Amidst all the legal turmoil, it's interesting to note that Williams has 10 children, a mix of biological and adopted. Despite his personal challenges, he's been known to express his Christian faith, often wearing a cross during his shows as a symbol of his beliefs. It's quite a journey for Cat Williams, both on and off the stage. 
Dave Chappelle recently weighed in on Cat Williams' controversial Club Shay Shay interview, where Williams made critical remarks about other black comedians. Chappelle addressed the issue during his set at Mondoray's at the Hollywood Improv, hosted by comedian DeRay Davis. Despite Chappelle's usual no-phone policy during his performances, snippets of his commentary on Williams have made their way onto social media. During the set, Chappelle expressed his confusion, saying, What part of the game is this? He only ethered niggas. He didn't say anything about any of these white boys. None of these white boys function like that. Chappelle, acknowledging Williams as one of the best in the comedy game, questioned why he would draw unflattering pictures of their own community, urging him to stop. In Williams Club Shay Shay podcast appearance with Shannon Sharp, he targeted fellow comedians such as Ice Cube, Kevin Hart, Cedric the Entertainer, Tiffany Haddish, and Steve Harvey. The interview gained widespread attention, even making its way into a recent Saturday Night Live skit. Chappelle, impersonating Williams, remarked, Hurt people hurt people, but I am a hurt person that never hurt people, and he does it all the time. Fuck this one and fuck that one and fuck this one. Chappelle questioned the validity of Williams' grievances, emphasizing that Williams spoke about things others did to each other, but not about any wrongdoing done to him. Delving into his own experiences, Chappelle suggested that if he shared his story, it would be heart-wrenching highlighting that he has faced personal challenges without betraying others. Despite expressing his strong connection with Williams, Chappelle wondered why Williams would call out fellow comedians when everyone is striving for a better situation. In essence, Chappelle encouraged unity among black comedians, emphasizing the shared goal of improvement for all. Now this, in particular, comes from the way Cat went at Kevin Hart. By now, you probably know what he said about Kevin really well, but do you know how their feud really began? While a bit of friendly banter is expected in the comedy biz, these two seem to be taking it to another level. The showdown kicked off when Williams, guest starring on the Club Shay Shay podcast, threw shade at his fellow actors and comedians with Hart squarely in his crosshairs. Williams boldly claimed, in 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show, there being a line for him ever, getting a standing ovation at any comedy club. Ouch. Williams even went on to label Hart as a plant in Hollywood, suggesting that no other star had landed sitcoms and led roles as quickly after hitting Los Angeles. Hart, being the seasoned entertainer he is, didn't let the diss slide without a comeback. Speaking to Fox 5, he coolly responded, You don't entertain the circus, you watch it, right? The Lyft star emphasized that he doesn't feed into the drama, but finds it all entertaining to a certain degree. Little did we know, this wasn't the first round of their comedic clash. The roots of this feud stretch back to 2014, when Williams had some choice words about athletes venturing into stand-up comedy. Fast forward to 2016, Williams took shots at heart during his comedy show, dubbing him a puppet. The feud simmered over the years, with Williams throwing public challenges Hart's way until he directed his verbal ammunition at Tiffany Haddish. That's when the fatherhood star finally decided to clap back. Cat Williams didn't mince words about Tiffany Haddish on Frank and Wanda in the morning. He hinted at Haddish not keeping it real, and went as far as accusing her success of being tied to relationships with white men. Cue the drama? Enter Kevin Hart, who didn't let this one slide. Addressing Williams' statements on Breakfast Club power, Hart questioned why people of color seem to be the ones tearing down those getting opportunities. With a dash of frustration, he called out Williams for consistently blaming Hollywood and the white man without taking responsibility for his own actions. Adding fuel to the fire, Hart claimed Williams was on the unbankable list due to alleged drug use. Despite their ongoing feud, Hart surprised many with a surprisingly mature response when it was revealed that his ex-wife, Tori Hart, was hitting the road with Williams on tour. Speaking to TMZ, Hart expressed a positive outlook, saying, I want everybody to win. I hope the tour is great. Now that's the spirit. Kevin wasn't the only target of the Cat Williams interview, though. In the aftermath of Cat Williams' recent interview, the comedian stirred up a whirlwind of reactions, memes, and discussions across social media platforms. 
Before the YouTube premiere of the interview had even concluded, it had already gone viral on Twitter. The content of the interview covered a wide range of topics, from fellow comedians to celebrities, offering Williams's unfiltered and often controversial opinions. Let's start with Cedric the Entertainer, whom Williams humorously criticized, claiming Cedric couldn't sing, dance, or write jokes. Cedric responded on Instagram, dismissing Williams's remarks as revisionist history and asserting the diversity of his career beyond a single joke. Williams then delved into Kanye West's mental health, questioning society's treatment of individuals with special needs. He touched on Kanye's self-proclaimed deity status, his marriage, and the public's expectations. The comedian urged understanding and a more compassionate perspective toward those facing mental health challenges. Harvey Weinstein became another target. As Williams revealed an uncomfortable encounter where Weinstein allegedly offered a sexual favor. Williams wondered aloud about the ethical dilemma and how such situations are navigated. Turning his attention to Steve Harvey, Williams challenged Harvey's narrative about leaving stand-up for TV shows. Williams claimed that Harvey stopped stand-up after losing a comedy battle against him in Detroit, which involved a wig-related revelation. Ricky Smiley faced criticism regarding claims that Williams' role in Friday After Next was originally intended for him. Williams dismissed Smiley's acting skills and alleged that he included a clause in his contract stipulating that he wouldn't work with Smiley again unless he wore a dress. Smiley responded on his radio show, expressing no ill will and acknowledging that Williams made the role funnier. Chris Tucker's shift from the smoky character to what Williams called Epstein Island Chris Tucker was highlighted, suggesting a departure from Tucker's earlier comedic style. Diddy, Michael Blackson, Jonathan Majors, Joe Rogan, and Ludacris also faced Williams' commentary on various aspects of their lives and careers. Notably, Williams addressed the alleged Illuminati choice between him and Ludacris, where one would receive $200 million. Ludacris responded with a video freestyle, denying any involvement with the Illuminati. Martin Lawrence's attempt to put Williams in a dress for Big Mama's house two inches was recounted, highlighting the challenges Williams faced in maintaining his integrity against industry pressures. Taraji P. Henson's struggle with unequal pay in the industry was discussed, with Williams expressing empathy for her predicament and calling attention to broader societal issues. In the closing remarks, Williams emphasized a period where victims can speak out about long-standing issues. He concluded with a reflection on societal priorities, drawing parallels between underpaid teachers and the mistreatment of actors. Williams' interview has sparked conversations not only about the individuals he discussed, but also about the entertainment industry's challenges, the treatment of mental health, and the importance of addressing systemic issues whether one agrees or disagrees with Williams, the interview has undeniably opened a dialogue on various topics within the public sphere. Comedian Earthquake recently joined the conversation sparked by Cat Williams' viral comments from his interview with Shannon Sharp earlier this month. The interview, which has gathered over 54 million views to date, made headlines as Williams took shots at various people's careers. In a recent appearance on The Breakfast Club, published on January 26th, Earthquake shared his thoughts on Williams' interview when questioned by hosts DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God. Earthquake expressed that Williams' comments didn't contribute anything to the comedy industry because he didn't tell any jokes. According to Earthquake, being in the joke-telling business, he believes Williams' remarks didn't impact the comedy scene positively. Despite the negative comments made about him by Williams, Earthquake clarified that they are cool. He admitted to some truth in Williams' statements about him, while also dismissing certain aspects as untrue. Earthquake emphasized his preference for transparent conversations and stated that he avoids talking behind people's backs, opting instead for direct communication to resolve any issues. Addressing the specific accusation that he cannot read, Earthquake outright denied it before concluding the discussion. The comedian expressed a commitment to handling disagreements man-to-man, -man, either through conversation or confrontation. The conversation didn't just stay between Earthquake and the hosts, 
social media users chimed in. One user noted how Williams continues to dominate discussions since his interview earlier in the month. Another user defended Earthquake, criticizing Williams for making illiterate claims, especially when there is no apparent conflict between them. Amidst the varying opinions, some social media users pointed out that, regardless of the truth, Cat Williams confronted people directly rather than talking behind their backs. Instagram user at Social Butterfly disagreed with Earthquake's perspective, highlighting that Williams spoke his mind openly to the world. Cat Williams' life is a testament to the man he is. Cat Williams, born on September 2, 1971 in Cincinnati, Ohio, had a unique upbringing in Dayton, Ohio within a Jehovah's Witness household. Growing up, he revealed early linguistic prowess, learning to read at the tender age of three, and effortlessly communicating in languages like French and Creole. During his childhood, Williams embarked on mission trips to Haiti with his family, spending 1.5 years there. However, at the age of 13, he made the bold decision to emancipate himself from his Jehovah's Witness parents, driven by a desire for a life beyond the constraints of the religion. Facing unsupportiveness from his father, Williams moved to Florida, where he navigated the challenges of homelessness, even living in a park. The budding comedian's journey into the world of comedy began in the Avondale neighborhood of Cincinnati. Williams honed his comedic skills by delivering routines in clubs across the country, earning recognition at renowned venues like the Improv, the Comedy Club, the Ice House, and Hollywood Park Casino. His breakout moment on BT's Comic View featured him as Cat N. Da Hat Williams. In 2006, Williams made a significant mark by starring in his first comedy special, Let a Playa Play. The same year, he debuted on HBO with The Pimp Chronicles PT1, solidifying his status as a mainstream comedian. The following year, Williams co-wrote and starred in the successful comedy film Cat Williams' American Hustle. Continuing his comedic journey, Williams released his second HBO special, It's Pimpin' Pimpin', in 2008. Amidst a flurry of activity, including comedy DVDs and tours, Williams' 2008 comedy tour earned the distinction of being named the best by Billboard. After taking a break for four years, Cat Williams made a triumphant return to stand-up in 2012 with his third HBO comedy special, Cat Pacalypse. The hiatus didn't last long, and Williams was back on the stage, bringing his unique comedic flair to audiences. However, 2012 was also marked by a bizarre incident at a Seattle bar, landing Williams in jail. Surprisingly, the day after this unexpected turn of events, he declared the end of his stand-up comedy career. But just three days later, he did a complete 180, announcing that he wasn't retiring after all. In late 2013, Williams embarked on his Growth Spurt tour, showcasing his comedic talent across different venues. Then, on August 16, 2014, he treated fans to another HBO special, Cat Williams' Priceless Afterlife, directed by none other than Spike Lee. Moving into September 2015, Williams unveiled plans for his Conspiracy Theory tour. In an interview, he gave insight into the tour, stating that it would delve into conversations about hidden information, unexplored conspiracy topics, and the shifting perspectives we have on things we thought we knew. He emphasized that this tour would be a collection of forbidden topics, making it one of his most significant works to date. Fast forward to 2018, Williams continued to keep the laughs coming with a new stand-up special on Netflix titled Great America, shot in Jacksonville, Florida, then, in 2022, he added another gem to his comedy repertoire with the release of World War III, another stand-up special available on Netflix. In the world of acting and entertainment, Cat Williams has left his mark in various forms. His acting journey began in 2002 when he made his debut on NYPD Blue, appearing in the sixth episode of its tenth season on October 29th. While he's taken on supporting roles in films like Norbit, 2007, and First Sunday, 2008. He's perhaps best known for his portrayal of Money Mike in the film Friday After Next, 2002. But Williams' talents extend beyond the big screen. 
In 2003, he made a memorable appearance in the official music video for Nick Cannon's single, Gigolo. He also joined the regular lineup on MTV's Wild and Out during its initial three seasons, showcasing his comedic prowess. Venturing into voice acting, Williams lent his distinctive voice to the character A Pimp Named Slickback in the Boondocks, 2007. In the gaming world, he played himself as an onstage stand-up comedian in Grand Theft Auto 4, performing routines reminiscent of his work in Cat Williams' American Hustle. TV audiences might recognize him from several episodes of My Wife and Kids, where he portrayed the character Bobby Shaw. Not to forget, he took on the role of Roastmaster in the Comedy Central Roast of Flavor Flav. In 2018, Williams graced the small screen, winning a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series for his role as Willie in the Season 2 premiere of Atlanta. Beyond acting, Cat Williams has dipped his toes into the music scene under the stage name Money Mike. Collaborating with artists like Baby Bash, The Game, and Sugar Free, he showcased his rapping skills. While he briefly joined The Diplomats, rapper Cameron's group in 2006, he never became an official artist for the label. On January 29, 2009, Williams took a different artistic turn, releasing his debut studio live album titled It's Pimpin' Pimpin'. His musical journey continued in 2013 when he, along with Hell Rell, released a diss track aimed at Atlanta rapper Trinidad James, responding to comments James made about the state of current hip-hop music. On August 27, 2011, things got heated during Cat Williams' performance at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix. A heckler, identified as having Mexican ancestry, triggered an angry response from Williams, including the exclamation, So if you love Mexico, get the heck over there. In a post-performance interview, Williams attributed the incident to the heckler's anti-American remarks, stating, If a person starts their heckling with F America, then that gives me the right to defend my country. Unapologetic for his remarks, he asserted, I don't think I need to apologize for being pro-American. The confrontational trend continued in November 2012, with two live performances ending abruptly due to Williams's behavior. One performance in Denver ended after he leaped off the stage to confront a heckler, while another in Oakland concluded with a profanity-laced confrontation, leading to his exit assisted by his security. Switching gears, rapper and producer Ice Cube responded to comments made by Williams about the Friday franchise. In a nine-minute video, Ice Cube addressed Williams' statements on pay, casting, and an alleged rape scene. Ice Cube denied any intention to film a rape scene, clarifying that the plier joke mentioned by Williams was always part of the script but would never be shown on camera. The rapper emphasized that making a classic comedy was the goal and including a rape scene was never considered as it goes against the principle that rape is never funny. Williams, in an interview with Shannon Sharp, had shared his push to remove a sexual assault sequence from Friday After Next. He argued that making a comedy involving a rape scene was problematic and advocated for its removal, emphasizing that such a sensitive topic could never be humorous. In a recent interview, Ice Cube delved into a lively discussion about the complexities and controversies surrounding the Friday franchise, particularly addressing Cat Williams' recollections of their collaborative journey. Ice Cube asserted that when it comes to comedy, he stands on solid ground with unwavering credibility and influence. The conversation unfolded as Ice Cube responded to what he referred to as a discrepancy in the recollections between himself and Williams regarding certain aspects of their collaboration. Williams, in a previous interview, had shared insights into his role in the Friday films, notably shedding light on the creative process and payment issues. Ice Cube acknowledged that during the filming of the movies, everyone involved would listen to each other to a certain extent. However, he emphasized that they weren't willing to alter the movie based on suggestions, asserting, we do what we feel, and if it was a rape scene, it would have been in the movie. There was no reason not to shoot it. But that's not my style. In addressing criticisms about the pay in the Friday franchise, Williams had labeled some individuals as ungrateful bastards. Ice Cube, adding to Williams' response, highlighted the financial dynamics of filmmaking. He explained that a significant portion of the budget went into the film itself, 
emphasizing the importance of quality over low-budget productions. Ice Cube also touched upon the writing credits for the Friday 3 Quell, acknowledging Williams' contribution in enhancing the role of Money Mike. While not explicitly confirming Williams' claim about being approached for a fourth installment, Ice Cube commended Williams for bringing magic to the character during filming. Clarifying the casting history, Ice Cube discussed the roles of Santa Claus and Money Mike. Contrary to previous claims, he stated that Ricky Smiley, initially considered for Money Mike, was eventually cast as Santa Claus due to his audition and suitability for the role. Ice Cube expressed that upon seeing Cat Williams' audition, he knew instantly that Williams was the perfect fit for Money Mike. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.